Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you want to build a gaming PC on a pretty tight budget in 2023 you might be wondering how low you can or should go in order to save money but still get a decent gaming experience. Ultimately this recommendation will differ depending on who you talk to and what resolution monitor you plan to buy. But here's what I think is a pretty solid starting point for 1080p 60fps gaming. The Ryzen 5 2600 is a good place to start. This 6 core 12 thread AM4 processor can be found for less than a quarter of its original price, supports Windows 11 and it can be overclocked. If you can find a boxed one then the included cooler will be more than sufficient as well. The tried and tested AM4 platform is still excellent and there is still room for upgrade, especially if you go for a B450 motherboard, or better. I paid just £48 for mine and I'd suggest pairing it with 16 gigs of dual channel RAM clocked at 3200 MHz or above. This isn't a necessity by any means though. For the graphics card I think an 8GB RX 580 is still a pretty solid choice and again the price of these has really dropped in recent months. There are 4GB 580s available too and they will still do okay but the 8GB models will give you extra peace of mind especially as games seem to be becoming more and more VRAM hungry. The Ryzen 2600 can definitely handle a more powerful card if you want to opt for something better but having paid just under £130 for this CPU and GPU card combo, less than 80 for the card on its own, I think that these two components represent solid price to performance. We won't be maxing anything out for sure, but let's see what these two can do with 16 gigs of RAM and a 1TB SATA SSD also inside the system. Okay, so first up we have Elden Ring, 1080p of course is the resolution that we will be sticking to throughout today's video. As you can see the Ryzen 5 2600 isn't really being utilised all that much here. The RX 580 is going to be sitting at 99 to 100% usage most of the time. This boosts to 1340 megahertz max and it will sit there pretty much all of the time as well. The game will hit 60 FPS or the 60 FPS cap and what you also notice from the on-screen figures is that this is quite an efficient combination in terms of power consumption. The Ryzen 5 2600 not using much power and the Ryzen, sorry the RX 580 also pretty efficient too I think. If you're concerned about power consumption things like that then this combo may also be worth considering. The uh, 6 cores and 12 threads of the Ryzen 5 2600 really have helped it to uh, that let's say live a longer life than perhaps some of the competitors out there have that released at the same time. It's still a pretty solid option these days. Next up we have Deathloop, I've added this back into the benchmarks because I've been having fun playing it lately. What I was saying about the Ryzen 5 2600 just then also applies to the 3600 because you might find that in some places the Ryzen 5 3600 doesn't actually cost that much more, yet it may offer better performance especially in certain games. I think if you're using an RX 580 or a similar card though, because that's going to be the limiting factor in most situations, you aren't going to notice much of a difference between the 20 600 and 3600 but it may help out in those CPU intensive tasks so if you want to do a little bit of video editing CPU intensive stuff like that then it could make more sense going for the 3600 especially if it doesn't cost that much more where you live. Both the CPU and GPU are staying well within reasonable temperatures too which is always nice to see. Forza Horizon 5 is very well optimised, it is more GPU intensive and it runs absolutely fine here. High preset this time at 1080p of course with 75 FPS on average. What I like about Forza is that more often than not it will run really consistently as well so the percentile lows will often be very good as you can see here 67 and 64 respectively means that this one is very smooth in and out of multiplayer or multi-competitor races. Now I definitely suggest 16 gigs as a minimum uh, RAM wise in 2023. 16 is a nice place to be. If you can afford 32 gigs go for it because I think more and more games tend to be using up more and more system resources whether that's just due to poor optimization or we'll head there eventually of course won't we. I mean things are going to get more demanding over time so with RAM being as cheap as it is on some sites at the moment, 32 gigs may very well be worth going for. But if you're building a system like this, I'd say 16 is still fine. It will help you save a bit of money too. 
Okay, so Marvel Spider-Man Remastered. I was a bit worried about this one. This tends to be more CPU intensive, but again, in pairing with the RX 580, the Ryzen 5 is doing an excellent job. Staying cool with the stock cooler too. We do have overclocking potential. I didn't do that for this video. Um, it wouldn't have made much of a difference considering the uh, GPU holding us back really, but this pairing is still one that I would recommend for sure. Here in Spider-Man we are averaging 65 FPS on average with okay 1.1% lows though I think due to the CPU we will see a few little dips and drops here and there and you may be able to pick those up on the frame time graph. For the most part though it's doing really well. Now as you can see by the VRAM if we were using the 4 gigabyte card I think it would definitely struggle a lot more. It's just nice to have that 8 gigs here just as a little bit of peace of mind. Now in Cyberpunk 2077, this benefits from FSR and I enabled it here because it makes all the difference. I was able to utilize uh, the low, sorry, the high texture quality here thanks to the VRAM amount. Everything else was set to low, including the crowd density option for the sake of the CPU. And yet we still managed to average 70 FPS, which was pretty good. The percentile lows were also okay. I think in those busier areas, even though we have the crowd density turned down to low, you're going to see fairly high CPU usage because this is a CPU hog, but it's not going to go too high here. And for the most part, I was pretty impressed with what I saw with this configuration. You can see the RX 580 pretty much, it's glued to that sort of boost clock speed, 1340 megahertz here. It's running really, really nicely. Again, we're exceeding four gigs of VRAM, almost eight gigs of system memory as well. So it's well worth having 16 gigs as a minimum in 2023. This combo still holding up fairly nicely though, especially if you want to game at 1920 by 1080. All right, so Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Here we have the balanced preset, no upscaling methods needed here. 1080p with anti-aliasing set to normal as well. Wow, I actually didn't get wiped out then. Fully expected to, but managed to survive that encounter somehow. This is a fast-paced online multiplayer game. The performance is going to vary depending on the map that you're playing, but you're never going to see less than 60 FPS on average at all here, I don't think. The percentile lows are also pretty good, so it's going to be a consistent experience with this hardware. Nice to see this CPU and GPU in action together, I think. Now, it's always tough to decide the Fortnite settings, but I decided to opt for the medium preset at 1080p. Now, by default, the resolution scaling slider will turn down a little bit, so I dragged that back up to 100%. So this is full 1080p here, over 100 frames per second with 72 as a 1% low and 0.1% low of 49. So again, pretty good performance here, enough to remain competitive i was just sort of running around collecting materials in this footage not much going on as you can see by the system ram usage almost 12 gigs so definitely benefits to have 16 these days and with these settings everything is running pretty smoothly indeed so as usual in red dead redemption 2 i've gone for the console quality settings now again the rx 580 is going to be the limiting factor but you might find that in busier towns like valentine and san denis that this cpu usage figure will pick up a little bit 60 70 percent it's not going to go too high because of the card that we're using but we are going to average over 60 fps with this setup and it's always nice to see at least 60 especially with this slightly older hardware after all the best experience you can get on consoles any console at the moment at the time of this video is 30 fps albeit at 4k resolution but I think 1080p 60 with these settings, it's an all round nice experience. It looks great and it performs well. Finally, we have the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt with the next gen patch. Now this has seen some massive improvements over the last few months, um, thanks to patches and updates. As you can see here, it's fairly smooth outside of the busy city. Um, the CPU usage, well the CPU is just sort of hanging back, letting the GPU do most of the work here. Over 60 FPS, 66 to be exact on average with the high preset and TAAU enabled. We also have upscaling methods that we could implement here, which may be handy in those busier areas. If we fast forward to the city a little bit, you are going to see the frame rate figures drop, but it's honestly not too bad. And this is probably what I'd recommend in terms of the settings for this game. 
But there we go, the Ryzen 5 2600 and RX 580 in 2023, perhaps it's the sort of minimum system I'd recommend building these days. Of course, it's going to be different for every game you play, but I think with the 6 cores and 12 threads of the CPU and the 8 gigs of VRAM with the GPU, you're sort of setting yourself up for solid 1080p gaming if you have less to spend. But let me know your thoughts as always down below. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.